Hello, everybody, and today we're going to be covering uh, pediatric health care. And to cover this topic, I'm really glad to have Dr. Amy Wise with us today. She's an expert in that. She's a pediatric nurse practitioner with six years of pediatric-related related experience and four years of pediatric nurse practitioner experience. Uh, she's successful at both making parents and children feel comfortable during treatments and working closely with doctors. She received her doctorate in nursing practice in 2020 from Grand Canyon University, which is in Phoenix, Arizona. And in 2016, she received her master's of science in nursing that was at Vanderbilt University. She successfully developed and implemented a program aimed at nutrition and physical activity for pediatric obesity for the primary care setting. And she is also uh, the co-owner and practitioner at Covey Health. And you can find their website, uh, the address of the website uh, below this interview. Um, and also I'll show you her website. Uh, so this is website. So if you are looking uh, for pediatric health services, you can find Dr. Amy Wise here and connect with her and, and get an appointment. It makes it really easy and convenient uh, to get, you know, the best health care that you can. So, Amy, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is really helpful. Uh, I have a bunch of questions for you that I think would help a lot of people. Um, yeah, so just interested, what, what got you interested in doing pediatric health specifically? Yeah, thanks for having me. So, um, I've always had a really a big passion and a big heart for kids. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my, even my initial job starting out when I had a young age of 15, were all related to kids. Um, uh -huh. so I always kind of had that special niche and where I could connect with them in a different way and in a better way than other people that I could see. So I decided pediatrics is definitely where I wanted to be as a nurse and then now as a provider. Uh huh. Yeah. And I like that statement, how you say you make it a comfortable experience for both parents and kids, because uh, I have four kids and this, they get really angst about going to the doctor. They do not find it comfortable. Um, you know, I mean, they make it as comfortable as they can when they when they go and the doctors have all been fantastic and all the staff have been great. But just the fact of going is, is not the greatest. So I'm really curious as to uh, how telehealth works with peds um, and how that kind of overcomes some of the barriers and maybe add some comfort level and how it does not take away from the uh, clinical experience, but maybe some ways that it is limiting. So what, what's, you know, what got you started first in providing pediatric healthcare services uh, virtually? So dealing with pediatrics in an office setting face-to-face -face can be challenging in itself. Mm -hmm. um, just because sometimes you're examining them upside down, yelling, screaming, crying. Um, so then putting that on an online platform can be just as uh, challenging. However, I think really just finding ways to work with the parent to find ways to help calm the child down, to be able to get to what we need to, um, mm -hmm. whether it's looking at a rash on the stomach or um, being able for mom to tell me a little bit more about what she sees and then me being able to see it myself over video really mm -hmm. isn't as challenging as one would think. A lot of times kids do want to listen to their parents. They're willing to be more compliant. And sometimes you just take some coaching on different methods that I have as well to help them with that. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder if uh, creating the environment at the child's location is important. And because, uh, you know, their environment can be distracting. There could be other people in the home. So probably creating a private uh, location that's not just so distracting, but that's also uh, motivating, right? If they have their comforting toys or whatever there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so how, how does that work uh, in your experience? So that's actually one of the things that we focus on with what I'm trying to coach the parent to do over the video um, is to set in an area with no other kids around. If they have other siblings, if somebody else can watch them during that time, that's ideal. Mm -hmm. Not always possible, um, but at least being able that mom can see the other children if they're young, um, but being able to kind of separate the child that I'm looking at at the time um, in a separate location so that way we can focus on just them and their needs. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, in terms of their camera, they're probably mostly just using a laptop computer, sometimes even a phone or a tablet, right? Uh, which is one thing that's cool about those is they are mobile devices, right? They can be moved around. The camera can be moved around. They're not so stationary, uh, but they're not as uh, easy to use as like a, a camera like I'm using that I plug into my uh, computer. Uh, so in terms of them being able to utilize the camera effectively uh, for working with you, how has that been for you? Sometimes it can be challenging. Of course, there's different levels of phones out there. There's different levels of tablets. Um, some with better picture quality than others. Um, so that of course can create some challenges, but just really working with the parents to find what works for them and meeting them where they are. Um, being able to just kind of show them like, hey, can you move the camera left or right? That way I can see what I need to see. They're honestly really great about listening to all the directions because they want what's best for their kids and being able to get the right diagnosis, the right treatment, all that good stuff. Yeah. And have you had any peripherals sent to the families, uh, like an otoscope or a stethoscope, um, or, uh, or not there yet? I mean, those things are pretty inexpensive these days, but I know not very many practitioners are using those of yet. We would yeah. love to integrate that in the future, um, mm -hmm. as of right now, to be able to reach every patient um, every time would be a little bit more challenging just because sometimes they use us infrequently, sometimes they're a new patient. So there's just lots of different things to work out with that, but we would love to integrate that in the future. Yeah, yeah, I imagine those things would be so helpful because some of them are just a one device, right? That has the camera, the stethoscope, uh, take the temperature, you know, right there. Right. Um, so I think in the future, hopefully more and more households will have those and at a really decent price. Um, yeah, so how have your uh, clients, um, you know, responded to this? And has it mostly been, you know, clients you already had or uh, all or, or more so new clients seeking pediatric telehealth services? It's been a mixture of both. Uh, I would say probably more strongly on the new patient side, um, mm -hmm. patients that are just more open to the telemedicine type of platform. Mm -hmm. um, of course, friends and family use us as well, um, just because they are aware of who we are. They like to help us build our brand. And then the new patients really seem to be able to enjoy the fact that they can stay home. They can be safe. They don't have to worry about contracting COVID or any other um, contagious illnesses while they're out and about at their local doctor offices. Yeah, yeah, even if it's not COVID, right? The flu right. or anything else, you know, kids yeah, don't totally. know how to sneeze into a tissue. Uh, they like to <laughs> wipe it everywhere, right? And crawl around the floors. And, you know, when we bring our four kids and one's getting, you know, something done, the others are crawling around the floor and grabbing on things. Don't touch that. Don't <laughs> touch that. <laughs> and it's impossible to watch all of them at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then they get really upset and start arguing. <laughs> and, yeah, it's, uh, it could be a challenge, whereas doing a telehealth session can be so effective for so many things. Uh, however, there's probably, uh, you know, things where it's not um, adequate for it. So you can do uh, an adequate physical exam, uh, even though the parent's not a trained telehealth facilitator, um, you can still do an effective exam. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, we have, are a little bit limited by listening to things like lung sounds and heart sounds. Um, but as long as there's no increased risk of they have like a severe respiratory illness where the parents are concerned that they're not breathing effectively uh -huh. uh, or something of that nature that's more severe that you listen to and look at, then yeah, absolutely, we can meet all of those needs. So care coordination is probably a big piece of what you do then because uh, you have a telehealth um, a telehealth uh, organization service, right? So when you have um, patients that really need an on-site evaluation or on-site services, uh, I would imagine you refer them out and then coordinate care with the, uh, the provider that you're referring to. And, and what does that process look like? What recommendations do you have for it? Yeah, so we are we are more of like a, an urgent care, I guess you can call it. Um, we are not in replacement of somebody's primary care physician. We want to work with their primary care physician. Mm -hmm. So 
many of the patients that we see already have a PCP, they already have an established person, but if they don't, we can certainly work with them to find somebody that meets their needs, um, whether they have insurance or don't have insurance in order to really collaborate and get them the care that they need. Okay. So if they're coming to you for urgent care and um, what type of care coordination do you, what's your care coordination activities with the PCP? So being able to collaborate, like for example, if we draw some labs, um, if we ask them to go to a local lab core or um, Quest Diagnostics, um, and they come back with say a UTI, then we can treat them, but we want them to follow up and make sure that it, especially in a young kid, that it's not going to be something that's going to affect their kidneys. Um, it's not going to be something that's going to cause them long-term effects. Um, and that's not something that we can necessarily manage, but their primary care physician really can. Okay. Yeah. And uh, do you bill insurance or is it self-pay? We are cash pay only. Um, we found that that was going to be the best way to really reach patients in the most effective way. Um, right now, there's a lot of patients that have lost access to care, um, have had different changes and fluctuations in healthcare in terms of um, everything going on just in the current arena with COVID and otherwise. Um, so we wanted to do cash pay so that way we can reach anybody that needs care without having ha to have insurance. Yeah. And what would be some reasons for other providers to refer patients to your services? Um, if, for example, they, like a family medicine, may not have as much experience in the pediatric realm, whereas that's all I've ever done. Um, wow. So that's a really nice way for them to be able to get more individualized care. Um, also, we're able to spend a lot more time with patients. It's not a quick, like the brick and mortar, they're only spending maybe 10, 15 minutes with the patient. Whereas we spend a lot more time with them deep diving into why they're having these issues potentially, maybe potentially if they're having, wanting more like a holistic way to go through things and manage their symptoms rather than just med on med on med. Right, yeah. Um, and do you ever provide consultations uh, to other providers when they're needing pediatric care? Um, at this point, no, just because, again, we're more of like an urgent care type of setting. Uh -huh. um, so it's more going to be tailored to people that need after care, uh, after hours care, excuse uh -huh. me, um, or needing special care that they want to see a pediatrician for rather than going to a local urgent care um, or having to leave their house, just kind of more accessible to them. Yeah. And are there, are there what, what tricks to the trade do you have? to help your pediatric patients engage with you through video and cooperate and uh, kind of de-escalate their anxiety? Honestly, I think that's just so patient specific. That's so hard. Uh -huh. um, every patient is just so different and kids are just so much fun because they're so resilient. Um, as adults, when we're sick, we're kind of crabby. We're not very nice all the time. Uh -huh. Whereas kids can be severely sick, but still bouncing off the walls and having a great time. Yeah. So just being able to really walk through with the individual and decide what's going to work best for them, different methods to help reduce their anxieties um, is really going to be the key. Okay. Yeah. Do you find things at their home that you often will utilize to help calm them down? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of them have like special blankies, special stuffed animals, mm -hmm. things that really help them to feel more comfortable. I think just being in a home setting a lot of times can help as well, just because they're not in an unfamiliar atmosphere. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what challenges do, you know, families and patients have uh, receiving your services virtually? Challenges can be, um, especially like the, the quality of the picture. So uh -huh. sometimes it may, like a rash, another example of a rash, um, it may look a little bit different over video or not give a good picture. Um, so then I will have them send me a picture instead to see if I can get a better picture of like a still form rather than a video form. Uh -huh. uh, so just kind of trying to find different ways to meet patients and where they're at as well with what they have without having to go out and spend thousands of dollars on a new phone or a new tablet. Right. Yeah. So the technology piece is the, the biggest barrier. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably always going to be a barrier for people depending on uh, 
you know, what they do. So, um, so your goal for your organization uh, is what? And, and what's, is there a more of a long-term goal? Also? So right now we only serve patients in Arizona. Um, we would like to expand to more states as we grow. That way we mm -hmm. can reach more kids, more families be able to outreach further. Um, and then also being able, like you mentioned, to integrate the different technology by being able to send out like the otoscope, the ophthalmoscope, look at kids' eyes and ears, the stethoscope to listen to their chest. That way we can just do so much more than having to send them out. Yeah. Yeah, that would be, that would be fantastic. Because um, I know there's just so many times when it's not, it's not really uh there, there's no benefit really to going into the office again sometimes there are uh but sometimes there are not and it can be frustrating when you're like oh i gotta drag the kids into the <laughs> office <laughs> kicking and screaming and yeah. uh, be exposed to things um so yeah it's very much patient patient centered uh i would say the virtual care especially for kids Absolutely. Um, yeah so in terms of your screening for fit uh, is there a kind of a regimented process that you go through to determine are they a fit for um, your your services or do they need to go on site somewhere? Um, it, it just honestly depends on what exactly is going on with them. There may be times that we agree to a consultation that they scheduled and then based on what they're telling us, based on their symptoms, based on what I'm seeing, um, if it's more severe, then of course we'll ask them to go to ER or somewhere that mm -hmm. they can be actually face to face examined. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what's that workflow like? So, say I say I wanted my child seen for telehealth, and I'm in Arizona, right? So one thing is, hey, you have to be in Arizona, right? So right. that's one thing. You have to be in Arizona during the time of the the visit. Um, so I'm in Arizona. I want my child seen. So I'm looking at you know receiving. Uh, services through your organization and again I'll, I'll share your website so what would the process be so for our process what you do is you go to our website uh -huh. um, or even Google you can search us on Google and they have where you can go down and schedule um, uh -huh. so you your provider we have family medicine as well um, but if you want to see me you can see I'm a pediatric provider on there so you just click uh -huh. on my name and then you can go through and see what we have in regards to scheduling availability. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're a new patient, you can get the longer visit as a new patient um, or as a follow-up if you've seen us before, or if you just wanna see, hey, is this a good fit for me? I have this going on, but I'm not quite sure. We have all of those options available. Yeah, so I would click here, I would choose you know, a date and time and, and just schedule it. You got it. Yeah, and then is there like a registration process? So then what happens is after you schedule an appointment with us, uh -huh. um, it will send you any forms that you need filled out. It will send you all of the links that you need to access us for that visit. It sends uh -huh. you everything really seamlessly right to your email. And you can even message back and forth with us through your patient portal as well. I see, fantastic, excellent. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Really appreciate your time and the work that you're doing and, and uh, being an entrepreneur to start your practice because I'm sure you're helping a lot of people in a way that's very convenient and comfortable for them. So, yeah, thank you very much, Amy. Yes, thank you so much for having me. We're so excited to really grow and expand and serve more people. Excellent.